show a lot of teeth when I dance. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Ira. <laughs> He's, He's your, your boy. Welcome back to Happy Hour, Quick Sixer Podcast. It's your boys, Pat Arster, Pasley, and Iris in the back. Take and back. Iris the kitten, you know, bath and kittens. Um, you know, it's your boys. This is, Drew, I want to break it to you. Go ahead. This is episode twenty-five. Ooh. This bitch Damn. of the happy hours. You know what I'm saying? That's what I. That's what's up. It's kind of crazy, right? It really like, is. Thinking about us um, coming back and doing shit and getting it, putting it together. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about it. Twenty-five, but uh. You know, we about to, we about to let's crack let's crack these brewers real quick. You know, Please. it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, a, a mix tonight. Oh, you're you doing a saying? mix? All right, doing a mix. We'll go ahead and start off with this this boy wonder, this hazy Ooh. wonder that Loganitas. Ooh, Ooh. there's Me a good too, you. Ooh, it's your boy, hazy that's, wonder. You know, that's, that's a good that chance. Hazy IPA. That's a six percent ABV unfiltered ale. Ooh, just that shit. This this might be my favorite. Lagunitas beer. Yeah, did I yeah. have did I have this on a previous episode? I don't the, know, but I've had Lagunitas? it on a previous episode. I'm gonna go ahead and do this ASMR for you guys. Pat oh, over here. Oh, I fucked up. Yeah, yeah, I was talking. That's all good. I gotta pour it into this quick sister glass real quick though. Hopefully, I don't spill oh, all of myself. Actually, don't pour it yet. Oh, don't pour it yet. Don't pour it yet. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, just just not yet. But that quick sister glass fire though. It is. Mm-hmm. Oh, you need to do set. Oh, yeah, micromanaging the drinking over here. Yeah, I know. I, well, I got some plans on this. You know, Drew don't know shit, so mm, um, it's good. So, anyways, I got uh, Meg decided that she found something that she was gonna send to. Uh, well, she was gonna buy for me, and she was like, "This could be cool for Drew too." But you don't. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You just gotta tell me if I can buy it or not, and then. And then uh, we'll see if you if you like it. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. So Meg bought two of these things, and I'm about to show mine once Drew opens it. All right. Go for and it. And right basically the idea was um, she's going to buy it and get it shipped here. If it's cool, then I was going to send my the other one to Drew as, a, as like a little, little prize gift thing. Uh-huh. So Drew about to grab on it, and then we're going to see what's up. Right, I'm opening it right now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> also, I just see lime green. <laughs> like, yeah. what the hell? Oh! oh. <laughs> Your boy! <laughs> Got that Nintendo Switch tunnel? It's supposed to be a cup. Oh, bruh. The Joy-Con's oh. attached. Oh! No! No! no. <laughs> the, jo- the Joy-Con's <laughs> attached to the side. <laughs> bruh. Bruh, oh fuck, that's funny, dude. Look at that shit. That's hilarious. Shouts out to Meg for thinking about yeah. some. <laughs> How fucking funny is that? Three D printed, three D printed hugger where your Joy Cons can slide in so you can drink a beer and play your games at the same time. Oh, that's oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fucking hilarious. So you be over Wouldn't here doing, cool? doing it? Mm. Oh yeah, no, I already tried it. You know what I'm saying. Were you able to, to work it? Oh, it works. These joints work. Oh. I, I say I made sure yours worked too. I slid the Joy Cons into yours to make sure it worked. I what's funny is you over here with these uh this NES. Oh yeah. So I got them uh they work for Switch? So if you're a Nintendo uh Switch online customer or a member, right? You have the option of buying two of these. They come in a two pack. They're NES controllers, but they have Switch stuff, yeah. so you can play the NES online for whatever. Yeah, like and with the real. This is like the real deal. Fucking yeah, like it, it looks. Lo- exactly it like feels it. real. Looks real. It's what's up, but it only works with NES online, so you can only play it with those games. Yeah, but it's cool. They also sell a uh, Super Nintendo version. But oh, that's cool. Oh, the slide of it right in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious, dude. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks, Meg. Shouts out. Yeah, that's cool. I'm t- I'm, it's yeah, cool switch. though. It's so she found it. 
some dude was uh, on Etsy like 3D printing shit for the Switch and found these. And yeah, so people who are not watching YouTube version, it's basically like a Mario tunnel, like the green tunnel, but on the sides that has like two things where you could slide Joy-Con in, so you yeah. can and have a beer in the middle. Oh shit! I didn't even see this. Hmm. This is in there. Oh yeah, a little crib and car. Ah, thanks guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a that's that's a private message. I'm gonna read it off the air. Yeah, that's private. Anyway, I'm gonna take the beer out of this because I don't got really a place to set it. Yeah, but I feel you. There it is with the NES joints on it. That's hilarious, bro. <laughs> yeah, Meg got to switch out in the living room, so I can't can't be playing. Ooh. Anyway, <sighs> well, you got to yeah, so got to pour Drew. this this hazy real quick. Show you oh, that no. hazy on the YouTube's. Oh, I'm a, you know oh. I, I got a different glass, but you know I'm just gonna cover the label and pour it. Oh, <laughs> you know we just get so much glassware from people. We just gotta. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love a good glass though. I love this. I love this. This uh, cane. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's a good colorway. This uh, teal yeah. to yeah, yeah. teal to gold. I mm-hmm. love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So damn, I drink. Just talking to shit. I drank most of this damn thing. Damn. Oh boy, was I was ready nervous to talk. he wasn't. I was nervous he wasn't gonna like that thing, but it's cool. <laughs> You know I, I get forgot, nervous about people. I, I forgot you drink when you're nervous. <laughs> I do, big time. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, speaking of yeah. speaking of um, what makes me nervous, and this mm-hmm. this kind of reminds me of it. Let me just d- make, double check it's not on this the, the, this uh, podcast yet. All right, cool. I'm just gonna say this real quick. I watched the um, the official video of Super Mario World. Uh, the oh, Universal yeah. Studios, bro. I was like, "All right, it's COVID nineteen. <laughs> like they open it up in February <laughs> in Japan, and it's just like, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, everything looks dope as fuck. It does seem geared towards this this younger audience that like likes to collect shit and like, you know, like oh yeah, almost the <clears throat> same as like Pokemon Go. How it was all geared towards like earning. I don't know if you if anybody ha- if you haven't seen it go watch what the what it is but basically yeah. you like you get a little wristband you go collect shit and you have secret things all over the world but I didn't see uh, other than the go karts I didn't see like rides I wonder if he, they were hiding like certain rides and stuff mm. from you I don't know um I didn't get to watch that I was doing some shit but I'm I've been meaning to watch it. I, all I keep hearing is that Miyamoto was just like happy as fuck the whole time. Oh, he was yee He was, <laughs> <laughs> well, was super excited. Yeah, I mean, you would, how come you created a, a thing and now somebody made a whole theme park out of it? That's just wild. <laughs> That's crazy. I know you ask you're going to be so uh jealous when you see their their merch. That shop that's exclusive to that that Japan store. Bro, of there's course some, it is. There's some shit in there that you I know you want on your counter. I know you want it next to your switch. No, no, <laughs> bro, I'm you good. love you I'm love good. figurines. Love. No, figurines. I don't. I don't got that many. I only got a couple. I, got I only you. got like that. I got the eight bit ones that are pretty cool. Yeah, like the link, the old Link one and the old Mario one. What those amiibos? I like, I like those ones. Yeah, those are the ones are I really have. But uh, and a couple random ones that I've just picked up here you, and there. You got me a um, amiibo. Yeah, uh, um, it's like princess. I, it's, a, it's a no, no it's, it's an Animal a, Crossing one. Yeah, I don't know what kind of character I, it was. I think her name's Lottie. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't even. I don't even fuck with Animal Crossing. But I came across a bunch of those. Yeah. And I was like, I'm just gonna scoop a couple of these up and like, give them to the homies because like, <laughs> whatever. I, I had no idea what it was, but and then like. Two year, a year and a half, two years later, all of a sudden, Animal Crossing becomes super, super famous. One of the biggest game the biggest in the world. Game. Um, so funny. It's been around for a while though. It's, yeah. it's on the DS, you know. It, it, did it get famous off of like a a second release or a, a an update or something? Because no, they didn't. no. What it was was they had a mobile game, and um, it it wasn't doing that great. It didn't do that great for. Uh, you know, it came out recently, like after Super Mario Run and all that shit. Oh yeah, and it didn't do that great. But then it was getting hyped up. Like 
Oh yeah, Animal Crossing is gonna be the big game for Switch this year. And then uh, Nintendo was hyping it and hyping it. And they kept on having like little videos about like, this is what you're going to be able to do. This is what you're going to be able to do. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And um, apparently it's super popular on like the GameCube and like some wow. other shit. And uh, I mean, mm. it's not a game for me though. It's like a, nah. it's like a daily chore type of game. Like you do some shit every day yeah. and gain, you know, catching bugs and fish and mm-hmm. talking to all these weird neighbors and paying, paying yeah. this fucking dog or whatever to yeah. pay to live in your house i don't know it's not for me but uh yeah fuck it i don't know people man. love it, it it just blew up yeah pe- i mean it also helped though people had a fuck ton of time this year just oh, to be yeah. in their house playing that shit so yeah yeah i think it's like the biggest selling game of the year crazy that's crazy anyway um today uh, happens to be Catherine's birthday. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday, Catherine! Happy birthday, um, baby. She baby. she she let me do this because uh, she's uh, you know she the number one. She the OG. Oh shit! <laughs> she giving me an hour to play. <laughs> oh yeah. We did some fun stuff this morning though. Did uh, she got the oh, open yeah. presents? Got a cake uh, shipped in from New Orleans. Gambino's Bakery. She loves this cake called Doberge, where it's like this huge stacked chocolate uh icing cake with uh Mm -hmm. like regular yellow cake or whatever inside and Mm -hmm. it's like has like ganache or something layered in between like 12 layers of ganache going through and then it's fucking it's incredible dude it's like the perfect amount of sweetness and you know you it's not too sweet when you're eating it and there's not enough you know it's it's you can go for it um Mm. so we did that that. so it's cool it's cool we having a good day Mm, that's good that's good you know i'm glad you guys be having a good day you know mm-hmm. i hit drew up this full day and respond i was like oh god what's bruh, he doing i bro i straight and then up this man had passed out bro you, you take a you take a big old cake. slice of that cake bro you taking a nap right after for sure okay um so <clears throat> speaking of passing out um Ooh. i got an email from um untapped you know you know what untapped is this is this app that you know you can check in beers that you tried and stuff right yeah um and basically i wanted to bring this thing up because uh it said it's basically your your year in beers reviewed right uh-huh. and i was like man i'm gonna I'm hit you with some stats on what my year was like and what it says compared like norm for normal people and my year and then I want us to try to narrow down our, like, two favorite beers we had this year on the show. Uh-huh. All right. Cool. You down? Two All favorite right. beers on the show? You? Yeah, yeah. So just, the, yeah, no, think of the one, two, your two favorite that you've All had right. this year. And then, um, or even just the two favorite companies you had this year. Mm-hmm. All right. So my year in beer, I've checked into Untap 329 times. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 right, it you, says, if, uh, let me hit you with the average with the average people say <laughs> it says the average untapped user checked in 52 times <laughs> this, boy, <laughs> this, this, this boy a strategical alcoholic i know i was like <laughs> all right all right so that's the check-ins right yeah. it has a whole bunch of stuff we about to go and it says all right next next check-in is beers Oh, guess how many unique beers in 2020 I checked in? Uh, tell me the number, At the first number again. 329. I say unique would be probably around 150. Oh, man. The average untapped user tries around 49 beers in 2020. Mm-hmm. I tried 205 <laughs> unique beers. <laughs> <laughs> Your boy was close. <laughs> Three hundred five. You, you know, you always exceed expectations. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I do. And one of the beers I'm about to have on this show is mm-hmm. actually in my top three check-ins. It is going to be my top check-in of the year after this. So that's cool. Um, wow. Yeah. With the it'll be the the home the beer diaries home style. I'll have eight uh, check-ins for that. Well, hold on. I got a question for you. Let's mm-hmm. see how how legit these numbers are. Are you right. checking them in before you drink them? 
during no. the drink no it's or always after, after. It's okay always so after. how do i know how do you know you, you were sober enough to get it right oh i wasn't there, <laughs> I, I, a couple of, i know it's off by but but it's, it's lower than it should be which is bad because i know for a fact when i was in new york last year we went to a brewery in brooklyn and it was like some microbrewery and i took pictures that we got so when i go to a brewery i got an issue you know okay saying? okay i got an issue yeah when there's when there's choices mm-hmm. on the wall i want to try all the choices yeah. yeah you know so because i'm like i don't know if i'll ever be back here so yeah. i want to try everything that's available so i tend to do that oh and <laughs> And for this particular one in, in Brooklyn, um, I said, "All right, I want a flight, uh, but I want every single one of the one beers you have." And they said, "All right, that'll be like three flights." I was like, "All right, cool." And so they give me like three flights, mm-hmm. and I took. They give you like place cards of what the beers are, mm-hmm. and like I took a picture of each each of the flights before with the place card. Like, all right, I'm gonna clock these in before yeah. I leave. Well, b- well, before the night's done. I don't think I clocked those in. No. That's happened a couple of times. So anyway. Uh, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> if you could, I, I know how you could get those in though. If untapped would allow you to call in and say, yo, <laughs> cause your ass can talk when you drunk. Well, if you could just say, hey, I bro. could check him in right now yeah. <laughs> if I wanted to, <laughs> but I just have it, you know. If there was a hotline for you to call and be like, yo, I I can't Look. type right now, but I'm going to go ahead and hit you up with all these beers I just had. <laughs> go ahead and How y'all doing, by the way? What y'all doing? What y'all up to? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> y'all heard about Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah. Yo, what's, what's your Christmas like? Uh, you, you traveling? Oh, that's bad news. <laughs> he be anyway. small talking to these people he don't know. Uh, I really do. King of it. Anyway. All right. So how many breweries do you think I've drank from mm-hmm. this year? Well, fuck. 205 Including. unique beers. Damn. And you probably drink from like 100 breweries? 85. Not close, not close. Um, the the top three, though, are kind of interesting. Hit me. Um, so, Bearded Iris. Well, that's a given. All right. All right. Boston Beer Company. Sam Adams. Uh, oh. That's the second one. <laughs> New Belgium's the third one. But New Belgium, good, you know. Yeah, that's because uh, your little trip. I mean, uh, your parents coming over, right? Yeah, I I tried. Well, and I tried earlier in the year. They occasionally Sam Adams comes out with these like variety pack ones, and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm always down for a variety twelve pack. So like, so I usually pick them up, whatever it is, you know. So this email, it was just to show you your stats. Or, yeah. or did they just email you to be like, yo, you good? Like, No, <laughs> <laughs> no it's basically the same thing that they do for like Hulu or uh, or Spotify, like yeah. your year in review of music or whatever. Mm-hmm. All right, so styles of beer. Mm-hmm. 57 styles out of 215 total available on the whole app. Yeah. I've tried. Dang. Apparently IPA, American IPAs um, are my go to and the rest of it's just bullshit but yeah i was well, like 205 okay. okay that's you know you do it you put in work and we all appreciate it for it i know i know i'm doing the god's will you know <laughs> well <laughs> i i would have to say beer and review i mean year in review beer in review year in mm-hmm. beer uh I, as far as like our podcast goes, which is not this year, but I'll just tell you like the beer, this one beer that stuck out to me and like made a lasting effect was Lagunitas IPA. <clears throat> like they're this classic oh. IPA because that was like the first time that I drank an IPA and I was like, oh fuck, do I, do I like this? Do I actually like mm. IPAs? And it, it and I, I've said that over and over again on the podcast and to you and to everybody who I fucking talked to, I was like, damn, mm-hmm. Lagunitas is the first beer to get me to like IPAs. And now mm-hmm. I tolerate it. it. used to, you put an IPA in my face, not ordering it, not drinking it, don't want it. I'm going to yeah. find the Stella. Like, 
So I have to say, like, that's probably the the most influential beer for me. Okay, for you. Okay, I think. Um. All right. Huh. I also did like those Mumford beers, though. That we got this. Recently. I was about to say Mumford sent sent us a solid selection. I've been enjoying them yeah, the whole sure. time. Yeah. Um, yeah, a beer that keeps sticking out in my head is um. Remember that one? I, one day we did two back to back episodes, and I did. Uh, I had that one Southern Grist beer. It was like a Southern. It was like a red, white, and blue can thing. Yeah, vaguely. and it looked like it looked like wine or something. And I told you yeah. it was it was the first one I said that had lactose in it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that one kind of threw me for a loop. I was like, this I don't never had anything like this before. And yeah, and it seems like you've been having stuff like that recently, or just like randomly. Yeah. I don't. I guess it started to be a trend because a lot of the breweries that send us beers were like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. I definitely saw a lot of like wine looking beers or like. Even stuff with like shit that you would never think could go, like lactose, yeah, and you know shit like that. So, um, yeah, I think I think that was like the one that kind of stuck out in my head. Like, oh, this is this is unlike anything I've had. Yeah. Um, but yeah, year my beer in review, beers in review, those definitely stick out in my head. And oh man, I gotta call it out, you know, us getting that shipment from Bearded Iris really. Really made me happy about this show. Oh, you know what I'm oh. damn! But that was like the best day for you. I know it was very exciting, but you know what? I've decided to put that third, mm-hmm. and because I'm gonna go with another one, another local brewery that I don't, I haven't had this beer before, and I haven't had it on the show. Um, Tailgate Brewery, Orange Wheat. Oh, because you know Drew be liking these wheats sometimes. Definitely. Um, it's only a five percent, but you know. It's going to be like a blue moon or something? Yeah, I think so. I've never tried it, so we're going to see. Uh, I'll say this about the podcast. I think the one thing that I've learned about beer since is mm. there's beers for different situations, yep. which I never looked at beer that way until we started doing this show. Because like, ooh, that dark, that orange, it almost matches the bottom of the can. Bro, it smells like oranges, like for oh, real. You straight up citrus blast, bro. It smells like orange juice, my dude. Oh, you better get that orange juice. Up. Orange juice, tailgate brewery. That's a local joint, you know. <laughs> you better get your vitamins. About to, bro. I've been taking that multi, you know. I need that orange. I need that vitamin C's. <laughs> you need a vitamin C's. Ooh, ooh, it's unfiltered, though. Look at that shit in ooh. it. Damn, I'll go ahead and get you that oh, cheers real quick. I'm going to have to drink. Hey, yeah, hit, I'm hit me with drink. that cheers real quick. Bow. Oh. I'm gonna have to drink this fast so I don't throw up. Here we go. <laughs> oh, wait, why? Bro, I had a beer. I was so disappointed. Uh, no, I want you to finish your story though. I'll tell you about my disappointment. Well, I mean, I I just finished it. Uh, it's just basically you realize, you know, c- coming on this show, like there's a beer for different situations. And I didn't think about it that way, and when I finally mm. realized that, it opened my mind up to like, oh, uh, you know what? I don't have to get the same beer for this because, you know. This is a day drinking beer. This is a going to the bar beer. This is a going to a brewery mm-hmm. beer. Because if you go to a brewery, yeah. it's different than a bar. You don't. You want to get, you know, <clears throat> so. Yeah, you want to get the things they're proud of. That's the thing. You know, we should give a shout out to that. Um, if you go to a brewery's um, or even if you're buying and like doing a pickup situation or a delivery situation like a lot of breweries are having to do right now because of COVID. Go ahead and even if it's not the cheapest beer that they have um go for the ones that they like they're that are like highlighted on their instagram or something like the ones they're really proud about that are just like releasing or i don't know like yeah get the ones that they're like known for but also get the ones that they're trying out so they can keep trying out new beers you know so that's all i gotta say about that like we know a lot of breweries that uh and you know people that we've talked to regularly while yeah. creating and doing the show that are having a really rough time and um, a way you can support them. You know, this was, uh, you know, ideally supposed to help support them. The show was. Yeah. And I think has in some way, 
um, at least gotten the word out about some places that you might not have heard about or whatever, but, um, it was, it was supposed to help small breweries. And so, um, yeah, if you're trying to buy beer in the new year, try to, try to buy some shit that they're proud of, not just some shit that you think you like. Yeah. You know, for sure. be a Drew, try some new shit. Oh, you know be a man? Drew. That's that be new shirt Drew. idea. <laughs> Are, are you a Drew or a Pat? Mm. Oh, <laughs> that's a, that's a good uh, quiz show. Are yeah. you a Drew or a Pat? Oh, uh, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, thinking hard about this one. I'm just like, what does that mean for me? <laughs> I'm just like, we'll drink whatever is put in front of me. <laughs> but I ain't no lap dog. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, anyway. Um, we got a couple of things. Speaking of 2021, uh, so we ran, you know, sorry if it flooded your fucking inbox, whatever, but you probably saw in December that we ran an ad for our, uh, we started a Patreon and we started a spread shop, which is like a, a shop for like our gear or merch or whatever the fuck. So, um, yeah, we, we got to continue to plug that shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, patreon.com slash quick sixer and go check out uh, our youtube page there's there's links to both the patreon and the spread shop on the top right hand corner go ahead go ahead and hit that subscribe button while you're there that will we love that you know what i'm saying yeah i can't wait for because these subscribe buttons can't wait you know it, it's kind of crazy um the funny thing about youtube and all that stuff is like when you get to a certain amount of subscribers you get to do like a whole brand new batch of shit like there's a whole new brand new like suite that you can play in yeah so you know you know your boy really want to have all of the tools so go ahead and subscribe to that (laughs) um but yeah we had to you know we're gonna stay plugging this shit we probably should have plugged it at the front of the show but who knows you know Oh, you can know. I, I feel like if they listen in 30 minutes in, they might want to <laughs> support your boys. I mean, I'd hope so. I hope so. Um, you know, go ahead and go ahead and his review. I don't even care if you do or not, but that'd be cool, too. Oh, he um, cares. Oh, I care. I'm going to read them all, too. And, bro, if, um, <clears throat> if you do reach out on any of these platforms, your boy will be responding. I respond to everybody. So, like Drew said... You know, I like to talk to people, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bruh, speaking of, I'm going to hop in uh-huh. real quick and tell you something. Mm-hmm. Um, I, If you listen to this now, there's mm-hmm. a good chance that a big project of mine got released. And uh, it's Ooh. an interview with Kirk Hammett from Metallica. Now, I've talked about it on the show before, maybe said a little bit here and there but it's like officially coming out on, t- on tuesday from when we're recording so it's definitely you know you can go watch it but um mm-hmm. apparently rolling stones is making a two minute cut of my video and they're releasing it on rolling stones and rolling like, stone bro rolling stone rolling stones are a band bro you know when we get drunk, everything plural. <laughs> oh, How, that's right. I, I, don't I, know, like, it, I don't feel like... I don't feel It would be like weird if to... we sent them to the Rolling Stones webpage <laughs> and they're like, bro, why is just this tongue in here? There ain't no video from Drew. Why is I seeing so much Mick Jagger dick? I, like, I didn't what, think, what's going on here? I didn't think I had to explain myself anymore. Like, when I get tipsy, <laughs> everything becomes plural. Like, all, right, all right, all right. So go to rollingstone.com magazine. <laughs> Go hit hit your boys up at Rolling Stones. Yeah, <laughs> go hit them up. TheRollingStones.com. I can't get no looking at. Oh, <laughs> this! I got that moves like Jagger. You know what I'm saying? You boy. You know, shout out to Jagger. Uh, uh, you know, shout out, shout out to Keith sh- Richards, sh- bro. Still kicking it. God damn. Sh- sh- shout out to Pat for uh, keeping things clear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so uh, the Rolling Stone. They yeah. uh, they making an excerpt on it and they're releasing that and then Metallica is releasing something and then so this is going to be huge like a lot of people watching it or whatever and mm-hmm. it's like my first big project that I was the director of photography on I you know I colored it uh, I did the final 
edit of it. Um, I didn't edit it, but I, I did work on the end. And y- your boy's pretty proud of it. So I mean, go I'm check it out. Proud of you for it, you know. Thanks, bro. So go check out Gibson TV YouTube. Uh, Kirk Hammett interview. Uh, it's a long one, so like, if you want to hear some exclusive shit, some shit that old stories about, you know, Kirk's early life. It's a it's an a, uh, from an, a series called Icons, where we take these legends, these guitar legends, and basically let them tell their story. And mm-hmm. it's fucking it's fucking dope, man. It actually gets pretty emotional. Um, so go check mm-hmm. it out. What fucks with that? Um, cheers to Drew and his projects. Thanks. That's just fire. Super jealous, but super Ooh. proud at the same time. Yeah, je- you know don't be jealous. You know, super, you know, it's like jealous proud, you know what I'm saying? Everybody like, coming up with me. Damn. Well, it's not even just that. It's just like, damn. You wish we could have done this shit together, you know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah, I feel you. <clears throat> I try I try and bring all my friends on to like shit like oh, yeah. as much as I can. And uh, sometimes it bites me in the ass because mm-hmm. sometimes no, my I friends know. be hood, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes Rough. my friends don't have the same. They I'm not don't. talking about they Pat. They don't have the manners. You know what I'm saying? The manners. I know Pat. Pat knows it. Pat, be, Pat always try to bring his friends on, and it's some, mm-hmm. sometimes will be embarrassing. Ooh, bro. Oh, bro. <laughs> I was so happy when you wasn't embarrassing to the show I brought you on. Goddamn, <laughs> bro. Uh, that, that that shit was so funny. I, I think about that every now and then. Uh, that show, Pat had me in a, um, a hidden camera. Oh, damn. I did. Hold on, let me go ahead and change this video real quick. Yeah, we, we damn, bro, we moving at five frames a second in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at this. Look at Shout boy. out to uh, Tailgate on that orange wheat. Mm. That good. Um, that's just done. It tastes like orange juice, but... Love that. Um, this is the most orangey smelling beer I've ever had, by the way. Let me go ahead and turn this light down real quick. You boy looking like he in the sun. Mm, mm. My boy my, my boy, just bright as hell, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> That's all it is, Drew. You just shining bright, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Ooh. What about the dark, just shining what about the dark Drew? Ooh, damn. Damn, that midnight, Drew. <laughs> Down the darkness. Oh, look! I got my chest out. Everything <laughs> get real sexy in this bit. Damn, damn, <laughs> bro! I, just so you know, uh, people on YouTube, I, I had this setup where I have a GoPro as my webcam, and mm. it fuck it. I don't know what's been going on, but it's it's worked for twenty four episodes, probably like twenty two mm. out of twenty two out of the twenty four. Yeah, I was about to say you fucked up. It fucked it's up fucked up a, up a few times, but. How how come all of a sudden it just straight up doesn't want to work anymore? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to give them them qualities. You know what I'm saying? Oh fuck! Wait, you on number three? I told you that orange went down quick. What? <laughs> this that bearded out her home style. You know that top checking of the year. Oh. You know, shout out to that black and gold, black and gold, black and gold. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, it's that bearded out his glass. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Shout out to the homies over there. Shout out to three and thirty. That's exactly what just happened. It, mm, oh damn, it did. Oh, uh, let's just talk about that for a second. Pat be checking in every ten minutes, <laughs> untapped <laughs> every ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you know how it is. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you gotta go for it. You, you know how it is. Sometimes <laughs> that, that just means this last bit of this episode is gonna be real interesting. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. Um, your boy went on a hike today. You know what I'm saying. Oh really? I was gonna. Yeah, yeah. So, um, huh, you know how it's like in COVID times. You know the 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 times we're in. You know what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah. It's um. Hold on. What what did I write down for this? Oh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um. In COVID times, in the normal times we're in. It's kind of hard to hang out with anybody, right? Yep. And um, I told you, I've said on this show before, like, um, <clears throat> me and Meg have a set of friends that are, like, um, one of them's, like, a, a professor, and she, like, studies shit like this, like, traveling uh, epidemics and whatnot, and, like, how they spread. And her and her husband have been very, very, like, the thing about pandemic, which... 
why the fuck, bro? How come we even have to know about this? You know what I'm saying? The thing about pandemic is the only people you can hang out with are people that are like-minded and are taking the same precautions as you, right? Yeah. Which in, in, in literally the hot spot of the world, Tennessee, I'm looking at you, Ooh. is fucking rough to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've said you know what I'm saying like 10 times in the last five minutes. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I recognize it, guys. Thank you. Um, Damn, whole internal monologue asshole. You know, Argue you know you with yourself. Keep... Bro, I'm about to read you some crazy shit in a minute, but uh-huh. we're going to get on there. I left I, I left a COVID dreams for the end. Okay. Um, you know, foreshadowing. Oh. Anyway, so we went on this hike today, and... um. With me and Meg and this other couple, like in uh, like one of the local parks, they have like these paved trail like hike deals, right? Basically, you like it's basically walking up a mountain and then coming back down. Mm-hmm. Um, and you go on this long like loop or whatever, but it's all paved and shit, so it's nice. And uh, the thing about that is like you got to be, you know, you got to stay apart and you know you can't touch anybody. And bro, I was thinking about it. I was like, man. People don't appreciate this wilderness no more, you know? Like, I remember as a kid just going out in the fucking, in the fucking woods and, like, just kicking it with my buddies, like, all day and mm-hmm. just be doing weird shit, like, bro, let's build a teepee out of fallen trees. Like, mm-hmm. this shit's gonna be fire. Yep. And, um, like, shit, we, we've talked about it on this show before, but that particular teepee. Um, and, like, just shit like that, like... All right, so towards this time of year, we were in that same woods that I've talked about before. And one of our buddies, my next door neighbor actually, happened to fall in a stream. And like in the stream, right, like through a thin layer of ice. And we were like, oh, shit. And he's like, bro, I got to get home. My my foot is cold as fuck. And we're like, all right, then go home. Bro, we was, we was some... Some fucked up kids. Uh, I like, thought you was about to say his foot fell off. Well, uh, it did. Uh, no, nah, but um, he got home and his whole shoe was frozen to his foot. So they had to hold his foot in a fire to get it oh. unfrozen. Oh. So he didn't get his foot chopped off. But legit, they had to like put his fucking foot in open <laughs> flame. <laughs> God. Damn, I kind of felt bad about it because his mom gave a shit. Like, how are you going to leave this boy out there alone? Not even come back with him. I was like, we was having a good time. We kid, we kiss. <laughs> he was good. He was bro, walking with a little ice block. Bro, he was like pissed off, but like he was just normal him. He a dickhead, so fuck him. Oh, and that's basically what happened. He Well, at the time we were like, he deserved that shit. He's dumb as hell stepping on that thin ice. <laughs> None of us got stepped on the thin eyes, did we? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, me thinking about go, it. Knowing good and damn well, y'all all was like, do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> it was kind of fucked up knowing one with them, though. Thinking back to it. There's like 10 of us out there. <laughs> damn. We were ro- just like, rolling deep in the woods. Take out of here. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. And, um, yeah, it got me thinking. I'm like, man, I don't think kids... Nowadays, you're going to appreciate, like, just going out and hanging out in the woods and shit. No. Oh. Uh, it, it's weird, like, growing up in the South, that's all we would do, you know? Especially, yeah. that, that's before internet, that's before a bunch of shit, social media, all that stuff. We used to just fucks with the woods. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I don't see that happening, man. We we glued the TV, I mean, we glued the screens, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Phones, all that shit. Yeah, but but it is what it is. It is. You we know. adapt. We did. We adapt. I mean, and you know, nowadays, if you don't know what's going on on your screens, you probably don't know what's going on in the world. So mm-hmm. I told probably you, probably better. I told you I watched yeah. that social dilemma. You seen oh, that? Bro. Oh, I told you. You to told watch me about it. it, didn't you? Whew. You know, your boy be addicted to some fucked up documentaries. You know what I'm saying? Uh, don't bring <clears> it up. Don't bring the not the one I told you about. No, please. Oh, bro, we gonna talk about it on a different episode, but 
<laughs> you gotta watch that shit. I actually don't watch it. I don't watch I, no, it. I told you I wasn't gonna watch it. Don't watch it. <laughs> just, anyway, uh, but just so we don't tease the audience, just tell them what the title is. All right. So basically, no, oh, just tell um, them what the title. Fucking <laughs> don't go into what um, it is. What is it called? It's um oh baby god. That's oh. what it's called. <laughs> All right, go check it if you want to watch some fucked up shit. It's on, yeah, go check it. It's on HBO. Um, the, <laughs> That's the all. The quick hit of it is. <laughs> no. It, hold on, I'm not going to give it away. The quick hit of it is if you was trying, if you was having infertility problems basically ever in Vegas before, well, in the last, like, from like 2006. Oh, no, from like 1950 to 2006. It was right. Uh, yeah. You might need to watch might, this documentary. You might, you might, you might need to get your DNA tested. You might you know need to find some shit out. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and watch that. Baby God. <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> it's super fucked up. Um, right. Just, we, we just watched this four-part uh, four part documentary today or in yesterday. It's called The Ripper. It's on Netflix. Yeah. And it's about this um this dude. You seen it? I saw like the first episode and the, like half of the second one. Yeah, man. It's about this dude that's just like killing chicks in the UK in the seventies and early eighties and like mm-hmm. Bro, I never even heard about this until this thing. I know I know in that first episode you, you start to realize just like how powerful uh like media perception can be on shit like mm-hmm. I i'm not gonna give anything away you should definitely watch it and learn for yourself but bro it's kind of fucked up like how we can be so easily manipulated you know mm-hmm. fuck mm-hmm. it i'm gonna just say one thing about it okay. they were they okay. were like saying basically police was trying to keep people from being afraid of the ripper and they yeah. were saying like you were safe if you want to hoe Basically, it's what they were saying. And yeah. so all of the fucking media, all this shit was going like, oh, eh, they're just ladies at the night. You know, they just prostitutes. Mm-hmm. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it. You're fine. Oh. You're not fine, bro. You're not fine from the Ripper. You're and, not fine at all. <laughs> and, bro, are you going to watch the whole thing? I, I am. Don't don't spoil it. All right, I won't spoil anything. But when you get to the fourth episode, mm-hmm. you realize... Because it, it, the the whole thing is is a lot about feminism as well. Like feminism mm-hmm. was having a big movement at that time, and um, you have these like um, female journalists talking about how like yeah they they were really focusing on these like, these chicks being prostitutes. Yeah, and it really fucked them up. Like when like the lead investigator guys like they shouldn't have done that. Yeah, and you'll learn why. But I'm not gonna spoil it. I I feel like that's like the through line of this. Really, I mean, yeah, it's a story about the Ripper, but it's also a story about, like, perspective and, and like, <clears throat> you know, police departments trying to cover their ass and, like, mm-hmm. media being fucked up by uh, saying some shit. Bruh, when you get to the, first, the last half hour, you're going to be like, how <laughs> the fuck yeah. did they not get this guy? Yeah, bruh. Anyway, um, speaking of crazy shit. Go for it. <clears throat> bruh. I don't know if you've heard about this, but apparently, um, I've heard I heard offhandly. I don't know if this is completely true, but um, I heard that people that have to stay isolated or or um, are doing things by themselves a lot, so that would be everybody now, mm-hmm. have very vivid dreams. Okay, mm-hmm. and. Um, Bro, ever since well, the last few months, I've been having crazy vivid dreams, like crazy vivid. Like when I wake up, <clears throat> I could tell Meg, like, "Yo, I had the craziest fucking dream." This is like bullet points what happened. Like mm-hmm. you know, how sometimes dreams be fuzzy and shit, but like legit break it down, and like this is a whole story that happened in like you know, there's one cycle in my dream cycle. So Meg was like one day, she was like, you know what? That shit you just told me is crazy as fuck. You need to start maybe writing these down. Dream journal. I said, all right, 
All right. So, of course, you know, I'm stubborn as fuck, so I didn't do it. Oh, yeah, of course. And then, <clears throat> and then this morning, I started doing it. Oh. And, uh, phew, phew, bruh, bruh, I'm going to give you a little screenshot. I'm not going to show what it was because it's too right, You ain't going to trust me after this. But, um, Ooh. bruh, I wrote this much down about, I, I woke up in the middle of the night, right? And when I woke up, I had had one dream before that. Yeah. When I went back to bed, I had a completely different dream. Yeah. Shit happens to me. So I had two full dreams last night. Okay. Yeah. This is what came out of that. Oh. Goddamn short story. Damn. Yeah. And, um, completely different things too. They, they, there's some weird shit happening in my brain. But anyway, uh, I was wondering, have you ever been in a situation where you having like super vivid dreams? You woke up and you're like, damn, I should have wrote that down. Like that shit is wild. Yeah. The answer to that is yes. But something even crazier to that, to that point, Mm -hmm. the same exact thing happened to me last night, last night, last night. And I, so here's the thing. I don't really drink liquor anymore, but uh, last night I had some whiskey. Uh, It was like the first time in a while. And something like whiskey does this thing to me where like I'll go to sleep and I'll wake up every two hours. But in between those two hours of sleep, I have the most vivid, long dreams that I ever have. Like literally it feels like the whole two hours you know, I'm living a whole fucking life in these dreams. And I'm telling mm-hmm. you, man, these, how vivid they are and how, like, crazy, like, detailed they are, it's, it's so weird. And I'm sure very similar to you, like, it, 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 it's almost like, damn, how did my brain even come up with this shit? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, we in the same boat. All right. All right, and then all right. So this is for the complete transparency. Me and Drew have not talked about this before this time. So the, <laughs> the question I'm about to ask you, I'm gonna need a real, real answer on. Okay. okay. All right. Of the two dreams, did either one of them take place in a deep Mississippi landscape? Yes or n- yeah? Yes. The one did. Was there a weird detention center type thing in one of them? Close. Or like a like a border crossing type center where you couldn't get past it. Uh Yeah. Close. It, it's uh, it's very similar to that. Oh fuck me! All right. Bro, do we just uh, have like some kind of? Uh, <laughs> all right. Um. Oh god. Uh. Let me just tell you. Was what... there was there a ranch house with way <laughs> too many multiple rooms? <laughs> it, no, there wasn't a ranch house. For sure. Oh, oh, damn! Are you thinking that we have in the same dream? <laughs> I look, bro. Remember that alien attack we had on the phone that one Ooh, time? I do remember that. We well, I don't think it's out of question, bro. Right now, we in the Matrix. Well, fuck it. You know, I watched uh, the Matrix three recently. Uh, that shit's crazy as shit. I never watched it before. Anyway, you were actually last night. You were in one of the dreams, bro. But but maybe we need to discuss this afterward. This is fucking. It's kind of weird. <clears throat> um, it's the other one. Was the other one at a Hogwarts type oh. school? <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm not even fucking kidding you, dude. Are you bro, serious, dude? Okay, I have to say this now because people won't believe me. But like, <laughs> bro, I went into this fucking thing, and at first. At, look, I'm not shitting you. At first, it was like a supermarket, okay? So we go into the supermarket. All right. And then I go into it. And then I and everybody around me has some kind of power, okay? 
we have some mm. kind of power and we're going and we're like and this is the reason why okay this isn't the detention center one but there was a situation where all of us were like learning our power and it felt okay. like something similar to like a Hogwarts situation and I was just like oh this is weird bro this is so weird <laughs> you that's weird how did I just get <laughs> Bruh. Dude, this is this is some like all right all right this is fucking strange or, legit, we have not psychos. talked about this before so this is like <laughs> this is uh we we need our boy bryce right. back on the show yeah yeah maybe there's a thing here oh no <laughs> mine was very weird um i was on the east coast in some like um it was like a hogwarts type sleep away school right Mm -hmm. but the only thing hogwarts about it was like the scenery plus this arena they had oh quidditch yeah yes kind of like quidditch but it was a fully like almost like the dallas football stadium with the roof that opens up Mm -hmm. but the whole middle thing was like a diving competition or a swimming competition yeah like there was diving boards oh, and like he straight up like, in the past. Oh, I think so. Mm-hmm. Bro, it was weird as fuck. And uh yeah, my buddy like apparently my buddy in this who very well could have been you was trying to tell me that he needed to go to this neighboring university school thing to get with this girl in California. Oh. And I was like, all right, cool, let's go. But, like, we're in the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah, I was just like... The the funny, the detention thing, so it was real dark. It's like me and Catherine were, like, trying to start a fire or something. Like, we were in the wilderness or something like that. And as soon as we got, like, a little bit of light, it all of a sudden we just saw that we were in this, like, homeless camp. This, like, really weird... 50 style small buildings next to each other like enclosure was there a lot of stacked wood i don't know if there was any stacked wood but it was all like fenced off like things were fenced off or whatever but it was like these like small cement little buildings that like were for homeless people and i remember (laughs) I'm not going to get too much into this because this that's fucked up. But all of a sudden, the homeless dude that was supposed to be in this started coming up and shit got crazy. <laughs> Bro, it's oh weird. God. That's so weird that like we had this like similar experiences. Obviously, there are different dreams, but yeah, yeah. similar experiences last night. Man, I, should be, I, it's like, I need to keep a dream journal because I'll tell oh, Catherine right. about shit and she'd just be like, mm, okay. Yeah, that's the reaction I got. So I was like, maybe I need to write this down. This mm-hmm. sounds like some some crazy people talking, you know. Mm-hmm. My shit was, I'll go over mine real quick. So um, mine was me and Meg were driving to deep Mississippi. For some reason, she doesn't have any relatives that live like deep Mississippi. So it was kind of weird. But apparently someone in her immediate family had passed away. And we were going down to see what was like left to us mm. and like visit or, or maybe we're there for, I don't know what the fuck was happening. Anyway, we got there <clears throat> and it was like this menagerie of a, of a house and like, like think, oh, menagerie. think, think like Winchester mystery house, but only a fucking ranch house with like built on rooms everywhere. And there was like I asked about the stacked wood thing because there was like people clearing around the house, like trees, like clearing trees. But like in in the dream, they were clearing the trees so that they could get like the, the reward or the money. The, the the exchange they got was like stacks of wood. Oh. And I was like, all right, what, whatever, and um. We were there, and then when we tried to leave, we had had this. <laughs> we <laughs> we had our whole like trunk full of stuff, and we had like it looked like a station wagon. I feel like in my brain, 
Mm. And um, but on top of all the shit was like a a deer skin with the oh. deer head still attached, like kind of like a bear rug, but deer, which is not a thing. Okay, not a thing. Okay, <laughs> so um, yeah, that was there, and they were like, oh, like we stopped it. That we had to stop at this like um border crossing right and they were like oh no 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 you can't pass with uh animal parts and i was like okay and they were oh. like oh, i was like okay cool and they were like no no you misunderstand you have to stay here oh yeah you get you get detained then, so we get out of the car and then we're in this like big building it's like super nice but we're all like required to wear these white jumpsuits and meg is having the time of her life eating like <laughs> fucking ice cream with like a sprinkles making all these friends and i'm just like bro we're here because of a deer carcass like bro what the hell is happening and then i go up to this one guy and i'm like yo we got to get the fuck out of here. Like, this is some bullshit. Mm-hmm. And he goes, all right, cool. Well, you can take that tunnel right over there. And oh. You'll be right out of here. Oh. And I said, Meg, get in the car. And we get in the car and we take the tunnel. And then we're out of the place. And then I woke up. Oh, damn, you escaped. That's that's I rare. Escaped. That's rare I'm on in a dream. Run. On a run. Damn, you on a run in a dream. I don't you know go what's going to happen tonight. Tonight, yeah. you still on the run. Hopefully not, but I'm a, I might add you to this note because it's it's bonkers that's, shit. Like that's crazy. it's, I told Meg like she woke me up. Well, I woke up and she was like, you know, morning. Like blah blah blah. And I was like, hold on. And I like literally pulled my phone. I was like, like yeah. typing forever because I was like, I gotta write this shit down before it gets out of my head. But uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if if we had similar dreams just because we stay in contact so much and we like talk that's for true. hours because like yeah. it, i feel like that shit kind of plays into effect but it's just that's crazy though it it's crazy I mean, when the dream is so vivid that like it sticks with you and i mm-hmm. remember like when we were the previous episode when we we're talking to bryce and from big but bigfoot collectors club that, like sometimes those dreams are more vivid memories than the actual memories you had as kids and it's mm-hmm. just like damn you know what's going on up in there something bro something going on oh you know just just being able to guess or not even guess just the fact that they were even similar enough for you to be like yes and yes to both inquiries that i was like what the fuck (laughs) like that that's weird uh i mean for those of you who don't know me and pat were Straight up abducted during a phone call. Oh yeah, that happened. <laughs> I think twice, but like it was. It, it definitely, I definitely have it twice. I remember one time very, very vividly. We were <laughs> fucking weird, bro. Like, not we, not in the, not in like the the sense that we were taken from yeah. where we were, but like legit, the, we were driving. The and aliens. <laughs> this noise happened in in the phone and. Uh, we were it both was, like, "What the hell? Like, what? Did what? you hear that? Yeah, so we were yeah. like, did you hear that? And like, yeah, 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 and bro. It sounded like old dial-up, like some kind of old, like you remember when you used to log on the internet back in 1999, like that kind of mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. It sounded similar to that, but like a little futuristic. So yeah. there's a good chance that alien entered me and Pat's heads mm-hmm. <laughs> during mm-hmm. that time. It's true. It's at true. the time, at the time, we were like, "Oh fuck, we just got attacked by aliens." And then the other but thing like, was like, <laughs> "But I, I mean, it's either that or some or, substances I might have consumed at Bonnaroo in 2007." Oh, but still like, there. It's either that or the you know the <laughs> aliens, but like. <laughs> Or the, them FBI's listening in. Them FBI's be, <laughs> be trying to get at me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Duh. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, that's basically all I have for this episode. But That's good, man. It's a good episode. People going to get a little freaked out about the dream shit, but you know. <laughs> this trip. <laughs> about the dream shit. That was way <laughs> too similar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be for real, like legit, we never spoke no. about this before this episode. So... That's funny, dude. 
That's that's not funny, bro. That's super scary. <laughs> uh, we intertwined. We connected. Oh, oh shit. Hey, uh, were they go? Have you seen the episode? Oh, I know you've seen the episode, but um, when Angela and Dwight inquire in the office when they inquire with Toby about uh, uh, gay men, and they and Angela <laughs> says, "What happens when?" Is it called red vining when they intertwine their penises? <laughs> you saying our our lives are red vined? <laughs> red vine. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, bro! <Bruh>, that, <laughs> that was funny, bro. Anyway, I don't know. yeah. Anyways, hit us. Up, you know, hit us up with them dreams that you got. I want to. I want to read some G, some dream journals. See what you motherfuckers are oh. thinking about. You know, because your boy is just having some weird shit happening to him. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> also, you know, shout out to all the viewers that we had on this episode. Uh, Lagunitas, uh, mm-hmm. Tailgate, Home, uh, Bearded Iris. That's all, actually. Um, That's it? Yeah, we had three. Because I had the same one as you. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out to those three companies. Um, great people. Um, go buy their beers. Uh, we don't want anybody fucking struggling. So, and I mean, they probably won't, but you know, knock on wood. But still, go support them. For sure. Um, little update on uh, my Rolling Stone top five hundred. I'm on number ten, which is Lauren Hill, the miseducation of Lauren Hill. I'm mostly done with it. Uh, really good. Next one is Beatles Revolver. Mm. Um, also, go check out the YouTube page, uh, youtube.com slash quicksixer. Go ahead and uh, hit subscribe. Hit that uh, that bell for notifications if you're down with notifications for that stuff. I personally hate notifications, but do you think? Um, go subscribe on uh, your favorite podcast platform. You know, there's lots of time. Lots of time mm-hmm. in this 2021. Before you get your vaccine, I promise you that. Oh, so go ahead and do that. Check out the spread shop for our merch. Go ahead and check out that patreon.com slash quick sixer. Um, if you want to support the show, if you don't, that's cool. All of our shit releases, but you get it early if you go over there. So, you know, that's what's up. This what's up. You know what? Um, if you haven't subscribed Ooh. by now to Patreon. Um, you might want to because uh, I may or may not over the Christmas and New Year's holiday dropped an episode with your boy Dylan Artist that I recorded two years ago. No, no, four years ago when Quick Sixer was on hiatus at oh. Christmas Day. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dill wanted to record an episode. He said, yo, let's try out this microphone. Dill actually bought this microphone for me. So oh, for Christmas. And uh, he said, yo, let's go, let's go ahead and give it a go. I said, okay. Sick. Uh, it's mostly nonsense, but it was recorded <laughs> in uh, Meg's mom's uh, dining room on Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the early we, morning. We both know. We both faded. <laughs> <laughs> we both faded at the kitchen table like normal. Of course. But um, go ahead and check that. I might I might drop that in there as a little surprise. Patreon exclusive episode. Um, but who knows? Maybe you gonna I put, won't. You going you gonna put twelve point five in exclusive? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. I will not. <laughs> Am I the only one that has that recording? I don't have it. I, I, right, well, I do have it. It's in the drawer right next to me. It's never I, coming out. I, I feel like I feel like if someone goes hard enough on our Patreon, we give them tro- we give them twelve point five. You know what? I'll put a tier on there. If you, it's gonna be a thousand dollar tier. Yeah. Cause then if you go through with it for a year. I'll give you that episode to that's do the, what you want. That's the episode that's going to ruin us. So if you, uh, if yeah, we that, could, if we could get a thousand dollars a month for a year, you could, you could listen to it. And we'll be done with the podcast. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, it might be edited, but <laughs> it might be edited. But you can have it if you go. If you go nine hundred a month, it's edited. If you go a thousand a month, <laughs> no, it's, it's never. Actually, I take this back. This is never coming out. <laughs> <laughs> it's never coming. out. I can't do that to those people. No, uh, no, no, no. That's never uh, coming out of the vault, bro. That's Disney vault shit right there. That ain't never oh, coming out. Uh, that's that Disney X. <laughs> Disney oh, XX. Oh shit! That's that Disney Disney Cinemax uh, collabo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> HBO After Dark looking shit. Oh. 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 Anyway, it's been your boys. This is uh, a quarter of the way to 100 on this new show that we've been doing for quite a bit. Happy Hour, the Pick Sixer Podcast. It's your boys, Pat and Drew. We out. We talk to you later. Wow.